Stephen Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm joined by Dave Allen. It seems to be the most randomest place for you to, uh, to have box. a fight. Yeah, yeah no, it's a mad one. Um, I boxed down here before uh, as an amateur. I boxed at the old two and a half a couple of times. Um, but I don't even know why I'm on this show, to be honest. We was on in Preston and the board wouldn't let me box a far, uh, like a foreign opponent. It was going to cost five or six grand, I said, I'm not paying that. And then we were boxing in Warwick, and then the main event was Mike Cole, and he got stopped by on a Ben. So that show got cancelled altogether. We were meant to box in Spain, that, that, that's not happened. So we've ended up down here, uh, thanks to Lee from MTK. He's made it happen, made it possible. And uh, it's quite a good show, it's the best small old show I've, I've boxed on by far. I think, I think it was really good, really well put on, in my opinion. Um, what's the percentage of your fights that have been away from the north? Um, the O2 um, tonight. <laughs> um, that's it. I think. I think usually Sheffield area. Eddie's kind of took me, took me to places. You know, it's been nice. It's been <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this this is this is the first because usually. Um, you don't your small all shows. If you're from that, you go on your, you go on your small all shows in your area, don't you? So it's a weird one. You wouldn't think I'm going to pop in a four rounder in in, uh, in wherever we are. Come Essex. Yeah, in Essex, Brentwood, wherever we are. So it's a weird one, but it was all right. There was quite a few people here watching. I still sold a few tickets tonight and whatever else. So um, I'm happy. Um, you beat Tom Dallas over three rounds. It was over four. Yeah, but you've been three. inside yeah, three yeah. rounds yeah, yeah. over four rounds. Okay. Um, talk me through it. I had a bet, right, with my manager, Michael Marsden, and he said, I bet you can't win on points. And I like a bet. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I like a bet. And um, so I said, I'll, I'll love you that bet. I'll go in there and I'll box and I'll. I did like a poor man. People say I look like Josh Kelly's like fatter, older brother. So I thought, you know what? I want to like go in there and box how he does. So I tried to do that. And um, it was successful because probably because I was boxing Tom Dallas, and I caught him with a shot by accident, and it, and, it, and he started snoring when I hit him, and it was it weren't pleasant to be honest. And um, I said to Tom after the fight, I said, I said Tom, I like I sparred him years ago, and I said I really I really like him. He's a really nice man, you know. And I just said you need to pack in now because you're not you're not gonna have any marbles left. And he said, you know what, this it might be my last fight. I said I hope it is because it, this is not healthy, for, it's not good for him, is it? And for the money he's getting paid. Yeah. I did feel bad for him. People say I'm too nice and too soft for boxing, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to damage a man. And, and them kind of knockouts, they're not good for you. But in regards to your own career, obviously, um, as your dad said earlier on, yeah. uh, what, I don't know how many of your fights your dad's seen, but it kind of refers to the fact that you haven't won in a long time. But yeah. Is that how it feels to you? Because um, it wasn't that long ago, you had like two or three on the spin before. My career up until boxing Dylan White really wasn't a boxing career, it was just like plodding on, I was getting a fight here and there and then I boxed Dylan White and boxed Lewis Ortiz and then it was like, well what do I do now kind of thing and then Eddie, Eddie messaged me that day, that beautiful day, he messaged me and said look let's do something um, and I beat the, the plumber, see the plumber the other day on Spike, he gives, he gives Simmons a good fight didn't he? Yeah, he could, he, I, he's popped up all over yeah, the place. Yeah, he got a cold with your right hand, he didn't catch me with one did he? And um, so and I beat Dave out and I thought, this is it, we're, we're just gonna, I'm just going to smash everyone in around now. And then Lenroy Thomas, it was like the weight of the world on my shoulders, it was like, it was like Bramall Lane, it was everything I'd ever kind of dreamed of happening. You know you have impossible dreams? That was my impossible dream. You know you have a dream and you think, it's never going to happen, like, some people think I want to play for Man United I'm older. I thought I'm going to box at Bramall Lane like my dad did whenever I'm going to box for the major title there. And uh, it came true. And it, it all got on top of me, and um, I didn't perform, and I got beat, and and uh, it proper gutted me for a bit. I got rid of Twitter. That's how much it gutted me, because I like Twitter, you know. It proper gutted me, and um, and um, so where where we're at my career now, I don't even know to be honest. Twelve three and one. I've only lost for the Commonwealth title and to two of the top five in the world. So really, and I've only had twenty five fights on the pro. So really, I should only just be getting going. But people are like, oh, one more loss and your career's finished. It's weird, isn't it? So I, Eddie, Eddie actually wished me luck today, which was nice. So I was thinking, oh God, what am I doing? I just want to go back to obviously that night in Sheffield yeah. because 
obviously aside from your defeat, yeah. the the comments from Eddie Hearn were yeah. some people regarded as quite strong towards yeah. uh, your your performance. He was very critical of you. Yeah. Um, uh, you didn't take that too personally, though. I don't take it. I don't take, I don't take it personally. I don't take anything too personal. I like Eddie. You know, he's, he's, he's a bit of me, isn't he? he's a bit of a boy, isn't he? I think I like him. I just, I've got to like him anyway because he's, he's run match trips. I've got to like him, and I can't say even if I did, I'd say I would. But um, um, what was I saying? About his comments about yeah, his comments yeah. are totally fair. I boxed dreadful, and you know when I remember when I boxed him, Dylan White, mm. I kind of got in the mode where I want to soak his pressure up and I want to take him out, yeah. And then I boxed Luis Ortiz, and he punched my head off, didn't he? And then I boxed Leonard Thomas, and I shelled up and just thought, I'm going to get you in a minute because you're a quit. And he didn't quit, did he? He wanted to. I know he wanted to, and he didn't. But, like, people say, oh, David Allen's a really hard man. He's a really hard man, David. I know he can, he don't get, he can do this, he walks through this, but I'm not an hard man. And you, like, I've never, I'm, I don't, I've never been perceived as an hard man by anyone. I'm, I'm soft as a come, I'm a really nice fella. I'm not an hard man. You know, as a kid, I was a really top level sprinter, athlete, all around. Great, not like a great footballer. I think I was. But, I probably weren't. Played every sport to, to the nearest, to the highest level. I've always been an athlete, and I've just become a punch bag for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And I think, I know it was only Tom Dallas and I, but hopefully that's the start of coming out of my shell. And, Cause I'm not an hard man. You know, I don't mind admitting that I'm not a hard man. And hopefully we're just gonna get into just get get boxing now, and and hopefully we'll get Leonard Thomas again. If we don't, I, I think I can beat Leonard Thomas because he, he's not he's not a great fighter by any means. I should have beat him. Comfortably, and if it's not him, I just want to do six and eight rounds and learn. I'm not bothered about watching the telly, don't care. It, it got on top of me, I've got a lot of <laughs> I was so stressed leading us that Sheffield fight and then um, went out on the day and all that, like Eddie said. But really, it was just, just wanted to get out, I just wanted to get out of my own head to be honest for a while. And then, um, yeah, because he made I learned so much from it now. He made reference to you being out with Alex, some, Alex some of your fans <laughs> Alex on happened. the day of your yeah. fight. I was going to Nando, was a Monty, so I said, Look. My following around that time, like, was ridiculous. Like, I couldn't. Sky Sports News had mentioned I'm fighting Tom Dallas today. You know, on Sky Sports News, it was mentioning me fighting Tom Dallas. Why? Why is that? <laughs> why is that relevant? Um, and it, and I kind of went from overnight to being like, you know, like fat kids from Doncaster to like being recognised like in places like in public workout like and stuff, and it just. I don't know whether, I don't think it, it didn't get to my head in terms of like I'm better than I am, it got to my head in terms of like I'm really stressed, people really want me to do this and it just got on top of me. It's just the old occasion and everything got on top of me. I, I weren't I weren't I weren't ready. I'm not making out I'm Justin Bieber or nothing, but like the whole thing just kinda of got on top of me and then I let myself down. So Eddie Eddie what I'm basically saying is Eddie was right in what he said and um and even if I didn't think he was right, I would say he was right because I want another chance. <laughs> but he was right, he was right. Um some people sort of see that as a, a wasted opportunity for you Absolutely, in Sheffield. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watching the fight back and looking at how Leroy Thomas fought, it was kind of there for you to to take that title that night. Absolutely. I'm never going to get a better chance for the Commonwealth title. If, if I don't fight Leroy, if I don't get the Leroy Thomas rematch like, until until my last day, I'm just going to think I should win Commonwealth champion at Bramall Lane as well. And um, really. Um, I didn't, the other day I was in Monty's car listening to it and Fields of Gold came on and it just kind of hit me all at once like, just like, I could have possibly blown the biggest opportunity in my life. That might not come round ever again and, um, and it hurt a little bit. But um, hopefully things are gonna, things are gonna pick up and, and, and go right. But I always said from day one, I, I met you on, um, I met you April 25th, 2013. At the weighing at the press conference, uh, the weighing 26th of April, at the weighing of Khan and Diaz when I watched Dan Mihailov, and I told you that day. I, I, I said to you, you didn't even know me then, and I was like, I'm going to entertain people because you know, I met people, I met people smiling, and and hopefully, I said I want to be world champion then, but I'm, that, that's what's going to happen now. But I, I, but like, I, I always said I'd entertain and make people smile and make people laugh, and, and people, those people even come to Essex to watch me tonight from all over the place, and and as long as I'm doing that, I'm happy. But you know, I. I I still think it's a, I've got a long way to go in this world, a long, long way to go. A long way, a long way. Maybe not the longest way, but pretty fucking far, I think. I remember when um, we spoke before, on the, we did that interview, that really good interview, yeah. in your hotel room. It touched a lot of people, that, actually. Yeah. I know, yeah. It, um, it was... 
we've got this stuff going on. Um, it's Tony Conquest. Um, yeah, when we did that interview, um, kind of asked you about realistically your aims in in the boxing. Not gonna call it a game, but in boxing, yeah, in the boxing world. And you know, you're adamant that you want to become world champion. Yeah, yeah. Um, does that change? Yeah, you know, um, I always tell people. People say I always say things on Twitter and they go. You can't say that because like, you don't believe in yourself, but you've got to be realistic. Being realistic stops people from getting hurt in this sport. Tom Dallas has got to realise now that every time he gets hit on the chin, he's going to go to sleep. So if he carries on, realistically, he's going to end up in a really bad physical way. So he's got to stop. I've got to realistically know if I train really hard, I can win a British title. If I think I'm going to be world champion, and in 10 years' time, when I finally do retire, I'm going to be a very unhappy man. I'm very realistic. I don't, my, my level right now, I can beat Leonard Thomas for the Commonwealth title, but 20 years ago, I wouldn't be anywhere near a Commonwealth or a British title fight. I'd be at area level fighting. I'm a, I'm a decent, I'm a good fighter, you know, like, ask anyone. Well, 20 years ago, you was about four. Pardon? Did you say 20 years ago? <laughs> Not me personally. <laughs> right. I, well, but you know, like 20, 30 years ago, I wouldn't be anywhere near a Commonwealth title. But the fact that Leonard Thomas is holding it and he's around that level gives me a very, very good chance of winning it. So, what I'm trying to say is, Am I going to be world champion? I, probably not. I'm never going to be an Anthony Joshua. I boxed his head off once in sparring, and that is fucking true. How many people do get some rights to that? But it's true, I boxed his head off. Someone from West Ham Club shut me hand. But anyway, I'm never going to beat him in a fight. Probably not, you know. I'm never going to be beat Tyson Fury, 100% I'm not. So I'm probably not going to be world champion, even though there's enough belts to go around now. So I'm going to be realistic. Can I be British Commonwealth world champion? Absolutely, yeah. Um, by doing that, I've really got to stay on these shows and do six and eight rounds and learn and improve. And then, you know, and then. If I, if I box Gary Cornish or Sam Sexton tomorrow, I'll be British champion tomorrow. But I thought that about Leonard Thomas, so maybe I wouldn't beat him, I don't know. But what I'm saying is, realistically, I can be British Commonwealth champion, and then after that's a bonus. And that, that's not not believing myself, that's being realistic, and, and that's, that's achieving the goals that I set myself. Would well, I want to be world champion? Absolutely, yeah. But this man on my right was a world champion, he was 100 times the fighter I was, so I, I, you know what I mean? So that's, that's being realistic, not being, not being down on myself. That interview as well, obviously, a lot of stuff you were openly talking about. Yeah. Um, people will obviously know what I'm referring to, and mm. where are you with that now? My gambling. Gambling's all right, you know, I like gambling. <laughs> um, I've not been gambling as, as much as I used to. You know, I had a bet today, so I get a bit stressed when I fight. <laughs> so I had a bet today. Uh, good racing today. But, my dad's here today. My dad's here. My dad's not very well, he's got cancer now. He told me after the fight at Bromwell Lane. But he's sound, you know, he's such an hard, my dad's an hard man. Sorry you know. to hear that. No, no, he's all right. You've just seen him. You want to get on the interview, didn't you? He so, did, yeah. Uh, but, he, he, but like, it's one of them things that, like, I can't, I can't feel sorry for myself. You know, people, people are dealing with stuff like that. So how am I going to feel sorry for myself? Because I like to have a bet and, and other things. So, um, I, like, people, I read boxing forums, me, and I was getting some stick on there the other day saying, oh, he's... He only moans when he's on small shows. I'm on a small show now and I'm very happy. I've never been as happy in my life as I am now. I've never been, the um, first time in my life I've been financially comfortable and whatever else. I've got, I got nothing to complain about. My life's fantastic. I've come down here, I'm going out with you later. I've just won. What more do I want out of life? Like, I, I want to be world champion, but if I'm not, I'm, right now I'm very happy. So. Always aim wide, always aim your goals right. You never know where it can, you never know where it can lead you, do you know what I mean? Do you think, what about realisticness? Would you prefer to be realistic? Well, you you'd be realistic, well, if you aim, you aim, aim yourself high and you aim, you, your goals are aimed high, you should, you should always aim, aim, for, well, say, aim for the stars, isn't it? Always aim high. Kevin was, was the ABA champion at 18, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, Fantastic yeah. fighter. When I was 18, I'd not even had an amateur fight. So my goals are kind of a little bit lower than this, because I remember you watched Carl Johansson, that was a great yeah. fight, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I know, I know my level and where, I, if I train really hard, I can definitely be British champion and that for me is, is fucking unbelievable to be British champion. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, they and, it, yeah. So, and people on Twitter are like, oh, he's only, he's only British level. <laughs> yeah, I'm not British level yet, but I'll be fucking buzzing when I am. People are always trying to bring people down. British, if, you, if I become British champion one day and my dad and my granddad, they want to be the proudest people in the world. And so will I. Do you know what I mean? So while we're here, we're also going to mention people on Twitter. Like, I'm getting a lot of like I've always got a bit of stick, but lately it's like British level fighters are very good fighters. Tyler Goodrum, was he English champion? Yeah. 
Yeah. Real good solid fighter, do you know what I mean? That's English title level and people laugh at that. That's a really good level and he's a really good fighter. I think people have got to realise that the percentage of people that win Southern Area titles, English titles, British titles, it's a very, very small percentage of boxers. Absolutely, yeah. Like, you know, one or two percent that actually win those belts. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of belts that go around, but those specific belts, our domestic belts that people say you should go from Southern yeah. Area to English to British. Because they're so used to seeing people like Anthony Joshua coming through, wiping everyone out, being the world champion. We are, I'm, I'm a little six foot three little fat boy. I'm not Anthony Joshua. We can't all be brilliant fighters. I try my best. I try my best. You know what I mean? We all, we all, try, we all try our best. Oh, Aaron Davis <laughs> tried his best, I believe. And he just, he just, why am I too far bringing that up? But I know people. No, no, no right. you can. Well, Aaron Davis, for me, he just, he's not, I wouldn't call it a quit. His, his body's just packed in on him, and he's, he's just, your mind, your body never quits, it's your mind that quits, because you, you, your mind can, your body can do more than your mind will ever allow it to, and that was, that was the case of that. But I'm getting off target, <laughs> what I was saying. But yeah, but like, all I want to say is, I'm a lovely man. I try my best. And if I don't ever become world champion, then what? That's all I've got to say. And I just want to thank everyone that's come today. And my sponsor, people think, oh, you put down here. I don't get paid to fight today. I don't get paid a penny. Um, all the tickets I sold, um, them tickets went to, to pay for all my friends and my family that have come down. My sponsor, Tom, you don't want to say it. This is why he's the best sponsor in the world. He doesn't even he doesn't even want create project solutions, but he doesn't want his name mentioned, he doesn't want anything mentioned. He paid for me to fight tonight. He paid for the opponent. Tickets were all thing here. Um, thanks for everyone that came down. And this is a really good small little show. Some of the talent and Lauren Richards, we're on about Tyler Good John. Um, David Oliver Joyce. But the Olympian. This is a really good show, I'm really impressed. So, you know, I've seen Francis Warren. I've seen him earlier. I've not spoken to him yet, you know. If Eddie wants to ring me and sort some out before I see him. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm fighting Box Nation. Do you know, um, you went a little bit quiet. Yeah. And whenever you go quiet on social media, yeah. people kind of assume it to be yeah. kind of, I don't know, like a, a, a bad place in your life or you are in a bad place in your yeah. life. Is that the case when you are quiet on social media? Yeah, or? yeah. It is, oh, yeah. that is right it's then. When, when I'm quiet on there, it's a case of like, I want a bit of a thing. When I delete it, it means I'm about to blow my top and I want to fucking start tweeting every fucking only. Because some people send me some shit and some days I just think, oh, I want to get in the DMs and fucking tell them I want to kill them. <laughs> so when it gets like that, I, I just delete it straight. I, I ring my sister, I'm like, look, change the password, deactivate it. I just need, to, I just need some time alone. Because like, people think, I'm a really nice man. I'm, I'm not an hard man or anything, but like, if you push me far enough, I'll fucking punch you in the face. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And sometimes it gets that level and I just think, fuck, like, I don't need this stress. <laughs> but yeah, but for the most part, everyone's great anyway, so. No, but it's just, it's become an apparent thing that it's quite... I get off it because <laughs> years ago, but I only had like a thousand followers at the time. I was fucking up. <laughs> I was writing some writing stuff on there, fucking up. I think it's like when I was 15 months out because my contract and I was tweeting some shit and I was like, my sister was like, you need to get off there. I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah. I can't afford to do it now, really. Because, like, more people will see it. So, I don't, basically, I get rid of Twitter when I don't want to have a public meltdown. Basically. And actually, two people rang me while I was on social media, you and James. So. I didn't even know he had rung you either. Yeah, James rang me. Like. Yeah. I spoke to him after you told me that he. Yeah. Whatever. And then. But a lot of people yeah. think, like, it's an attention thing or, like, or, like I take these big facts, I want to be on Sky. I don't care, Coogan. Do you know what I mean? I'm borrowing my, my brother-in-law's clothes to go out tonight because I don't have any jeans or, <laughs> or anything because I don't go out. I only have shorts and trackers with holes in. I don't care. I want to be left alone for the most part on my own to gamble. And, and not well, not gamble all the time, but like, I just want to be on my own. like, I don't care. And like, and some people have a go at me, but like, I'm being honest because that's me. I can't help being honest. You put a camera in my face, I'm going to shut up for that for now. I'm going to shut up now, but so, yeah, I don't care. All right, oh, we're out tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna come out for a bit, have an hour. They're gonna get these clothes on, see if they fit. <laughs> if not, just come where you are. I will. I'm just gonna go out. Mon Monty's really excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to be something different. I'd never go out in my local area of Doncaster because people know me, and I don't. I don't want people to. Um, don't want people to see me. Mm. Don't want to see anyone. <laughs>
<laughs> so I don't, I don't go out. But um, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Okay, Dave Allen, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Thank you. Hope everything's going to be okay with your father. He's all right. You've seen him. You were dying to get in the interview, <laughs> ain't it? He's all right. He's um, he's an hard man, my dad. I'm sure he'd tell you if he spoke to him as well. <laughs> but yeah, Every, everything's all good. Like I don't want, I don't want anyone's sympathy. Never. It's the last thing I ever want from anyone. Do you know what I mean? It's the last thing I ever want. I don't, I don't want that. People on these boxing forums, do me fucking head in. And they'll probably enjoy this, see me do this. But yeah, fucking hell. And what else? I want to see Jeff Thomas against Ben Dowdy. That's the fight I want to see. Have you seen that going up on the on the boxing forums? It's, it's fucking brilliant. I want to see it. I want to see that fight. I'm willing I like I wanna I'll put my money together and get this shit going myself. <laughs> I wanna see it. Alright. Cheers, yeah. Thank you very much. Top man. Couldn't cast this Dave out of my field TV.